Hi folks, my name's Ashley. I'm one of the founders of Skira, and in this video, we're doing a future focus on the platform movement. This is one of the behaviors in Construct, which makes it really easy to make platform style games. It's also got loads of features which you might not know about. So let's cover some of them in this video. I'm going to start from scratch and show the basics at first. So I'm going to create a new project. Uh, my player is going to be this piggy who you may have uh, seen before. I'm um, just going to resize it to make it a bit smaller. And for the platform, something for the player to stand on, I'm going to use a tiled background. So that will just repeat an image. And for that, I'm going to drag in this yellow block. There we go. And let's just make this uh, look like a platform. And the key to the platform behavior is to have uh, two behaviors, actually. First of all, here's the player, and we're going to give them the platform behavior, which will allow them to run along platforms and jump. There we go. So that's uh, given the platform behavior to the piggy. And the other important behavior to use is the solid behavior. And I'm going to add this to the uh, tile background. And this allows the platform behavior to land on it. Otherwise, it treats it as a decorative object and it will just pass through it. So now the uh, ground has a solid behavior. The player has the platform behavior. There's some properties for it there. And if I preview the project, yeah, I can already run and jump around on this platform. That's how easy it is to get started. Now let's go into some of the more advanced features or some of the additional features of the platform behavior you might not know about. First of all, it supports slopes. So I can create a platform at an angle and run along it and the player moves up that slope, no problem. That can be a tricky coding problem in some tools, uh, but it works right out of the box in Construct. Next up, I'm going to make a moving platform. So to make a moving platform, I'm first of all going to clone the, bur the uh, background, sorry, and I'm going to use the sign behavior. So you can see this uh, extra platform also has the solid behavior because I cloned it. And if I add the sign behavior, this is a good way to make something move back and forth and oscillate uh, some way. And so with the sign behavior, it's got horizontal oscillation. Uh, I'll make it um, oscillate every three seconds up to 100 pixels. There we go. And I'll just move it a bit further away. And now when I preview the project, you can see the sign behaviors making that platform move backwards and forwards. And with the platform behavior, I can run and jump on it, and it, the player moves back and forth with it. So again, right out of the box, you don't need to do any extra coding. The platform behavior can run and jump and move along with moving platforms. Let's move that out of the way. Now, a, another useful feature is uh, for jump throughs. So if I extend this platform and uh, make another one above it, uh, it like here. So if I preview this, you can see the player, if they jump into this on top, they sort of bump off it. But sometimes you want to let the player jump through that. And so instead of the solid behavior, you can use the aptly named jump through behavior. I'm just going to add a sprite, um, which I'll just give a, um, a nice blue color and make that into a platform kind of shape. And this one, I will give the jump through behavior instead of the solid behavior. And this will allow the player to jump on top of it from underneath. So there we go, and I'll preview this. And now you can see the player will bump off the solid, but they can jump on top of the jump through from underneath. So that's a useful kind of a level design feature to have. Let's move on. There's uh, lots of features of the platform behavior built in. I'm going to just rearrange these right now. Um, move that out the way again. And in the, if you select the object with the platform behavior, you can see all its properties here in the properties bar. And one interesting feature you can turn on is double jump. So if I tick that box, now you can do an extra jump in midair like that and you only get one extra jump until you touch the ground, and this lets you make bigger jumps like that. So that's an extra interesting gameplay control you can add just by ticking a box. There's also the jump sustain feature. So this works better with a slightly lower jump strength, and this 
allows you to do a variable size jump. So for this amount of time, you can hold down the jump button and the player will keep jumping higher. So let's set that to 200 milliseconds. That's uh, one fifth of a second. And let's put a, a platform to jump up onto. Uh, not sure how this will work out. Let's see, give it a go. So now if I tap the jump button, it does a small jump. And if I hold it down, it does a big jump. Let's see if I can make that jump now. There we go, got it right. <laughs> Good. Next up, um, there's even more advanced features you can do in the platform behavior. I'm going to switch to a different example now. And in fact, there's plenty of examples which come with Construct. If you click the Browse Examples button here, we have the entire example browser. And if you go down to the behavior section and in movements, you can tick platform and this will show all the examples which have the platform behavior in them. And you can see there's uh, absolutely plenty to get stuck into. Uh, here's one interesting one. Uh, the platform behavior supports changing the direction of gravity. So you can do mind bending, rotating level designs like this, where the direction of gravity is changing with the uh, direction of the, um, the angle of the view as well, uh, which can be a bit of a head spinning effect. But it's just an example of the kind of creative possibilities it makes possible. Um, there's loads of examples here. Let's just uh, pick a few more to demonstrate. Uh, this one demonstrates a wall jump mechanic. So this allows you to jump off uh, walls by pressing jump again. Uh, let's see if I can get this right. There we go. And I managed to uh, jump around the level more. So the platform movement gives you full control over the movement with things like being able to change the X and Y movement vectors, which allows you to add extra mechanics like this using Construct's event block system. So there's full control. Uh, you can do all kinds of interesting additional uh, mechanics with your platform movements to suit the kind of game you want to make. Uh, here's another interesting one. Uh, the platform behavior works nicely with the mesh distortion feature. So you can use uh, mesh distortion to create warped or deformed kind of level designs and the platform behavior lets you run along those just fine. Let's pick one more while I'm here. Uh, this one's fun, jetpack. Uh, so you can run around and jump like the platform behavior. You can also hold X to use up a jetpack, but you better not run out of fuel otherwise you'll fall down into the spikes. So these, you can look at all the event sheets in Construct and see how they're made. Uh, and there's plenty to show all the different kinds of gameplay mechanics and creative ideas you can come up with. So in conclusion, the platform behavior is a good example of how Construct works as a product. It's very easy to get into. You can set it up in minutes and get your basic platform movement working, but it's got a depth of features which let you really customize everything for the kind of game you want to make and uh, express yourself creatively uh, with the game of your dreams. How about that? That's all for this video. Uh, stay tuned for uh, more future focuses in future and we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, check out the video description. There's a tutorial you can try out as well and plenty more materials about the platform behavior. Thanks for listening.